Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Ishan. Um, my group will be presenting um, two theories today. Um, the first one will be talking about the normal seven stages of action. Yeah, and the second one will be the levels of processing by local and crack. So after presenting these two theories, we'll touch on how these two um, theories can be related to each other, but not these three guys, how they relate to each other. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, uh, I'll let Norris to tell you about Norman's seven stage of action. Uh, hi, uh, so from our previous HCS classes, uh, we heard about no uh, Don no Donald Norman's seven stages of action, but do you really remember or understand any of it, right? So, um, uh, this is just uh, from the internet, uh, this is just a brief summary of what Norman's seven stages are. So, the gulf of evaluation simply just means how the uh, user interprets the system and how the system actually is, and the gulf of execution is what you see is what you don't get, actually. So, um, I'll just go uh, deeply into each of the steps so we will finally understand what are the seven stages of actions. Okay, uh, I will use the uh, example from our everyday life so we can relate. Okay, the first step, uh, forming the goal. So I ask myself, what do I need now? Oh, it's dark, so I need light. So that's my goal. Okay, uh, then, but the intention is what must I do to get my goal? So the intention is I should switch on the lights. And specifying an action. So what do I do to get the lights on? So I should go to walk up to the switch and turn on the lights. And this is very self-explanatory, so you just do it. And we go to the fifth one, which is a bit harder to understand, which is perceive the state of the world. What is that? So, according to my example, it's just that look around. So, I just look around. And this will explain to you why we need to do it, because we need to see whether is it dark, is it still dark or is it bright already. And finally, the last stage wants us to evaluate the outcome. So, um, do I get my bright? Is it, do I get my brightness? And if it's yes, I, then my goal is succeeded. I succeeded, right? Yeah. So, now, um, from this, uh, Norman wants us to learn how users do and perceive and also achieve their goals. And from there, we as designers uh, will be able to um, design according to their needs. And from here, I will pass it to Wani who will tell you more about the design principles. Uh, hi, I'll talk about the Don Norman's uh, usability <coughs> guidelines. So, uh, it's actually, I, I think as UX designers, we all know quite a lot about all these kind of things. So um, when you design for a certain group of people, you need to uh, take note of the following, uh, like uh, your visibility, uh, whether you have a good conceptual model, a good mapping, and good feedback of your uh, product. Yeah, moving on. Okay. So uh, talking about visibility, it's about, you know, when you, as a user, when you look at something, you don't need to go through a tutorial before you know how to use it. Like the YouTube app, uh, we've all seen it before. Like there's no like there are some apps they give you a tutorial before beforehand to tell you like maybe you should swipe here, touch here to like see what what's up lah, you know. Like but for some good design uh, well designed apps you don't actually need to learn how to do it. You just by looking at it you know what it's meant uh what it's meant to do. Yeah, so like we see uh visibility there's like um in details there's like icons, um colour uh Color guides uh, and the visual guides and space dividers, this kind of thing, to guide your eyes to tell you uh, which part of the app does what and kind of thing. Yeah, uh, like for this YouTube thing, um, they actually don't use a lot of uh, colors. They only have like maybe three main colors, like black, gray, and uh, white. And um, according to design theory, too many colors actually adds cluster and um, noise to your app. Uh. Okay. Uh, uh, next. Uh, so when you design, you need to have a clear conceptual model. Actually, like not all designs you need to like have a flow chart or something, but you need to be uh, keep in mind that you need to have a clear model. Like. So let's see, um, it's just a very simple model here, but the point of putting them side by side is that uh, when you are designing like maybe a, a video app, you don't want to design it to look like a puzzle game. Uh. You know, or when you are designing a puzzle game, you want to make it look like something else. So the point is, you need to have a clear model that um, what your app is supposed to do. You know, like you don't want to confuse and you know frustrate your users. Uh. And mapping. This kind of, um, the mapping is. Uh, I like to think of it as you know when you teach your grandparents how to use a smartphone, 
you need to like come up with analogies to tell them uh, what means what. Like when I taught my parents how to use the iPhone, right? I need to tell them when you swipe across the screen, it's you, you imagine you are opening a window, like a sliding window, that kind of thing. But sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. It's kind of like, you know, it's something they already learned. Yeah, um, when I thought, um, I was thinking why some people don't understand the swiping thing. Maybe because uh, at, during that time, their windows cannot be swiped. Their windows, windows are pushed through, that kind of thing. So uh, when you design for a certain uh, group of people, you maybe want to take note of whether they already know something. So because you don't actually want to spend too much resources teaching them to, new some, uh, to learn something new. You know? yeah. So the last one is about feedback. Uh, feedback is, uh, there's two kinds of feedbacks. Uh, positive feedback is kind of uh, and encourages uh, certain actions or um, to guide you to you know, move along and kind of thing. And negative ones are to constrain you, to tell you not to go beyond uh, something. Yeah. Uh, positive feedback comes in terms of, um, I don't know, like um, uh, pleasant sound and um, negative one will be a negative sound. Uh. So a good example of this, I think, will be like visual. Yeah, because like when you like get like super a lot of combos, you get really like a lot of nice sounds going on. Yeah, which makes you feel very excited. Uh. Okay, so uh, pass on to my group eh? <coughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'll talk about uh, this level of processing. But before I begin, I'll talk about uh, this this theory, this model called multi-store level model that's introduced by uh, Richard Eggingston and Richard Sheffrey. So they actually propose that human memory is cons consists of basically three stages, the sensory memory stage, the short-term memory stage, and the long-term memory stage. So yeah, uh, next slide. This, this diagram actually uh, tells you the process of remembering stuff and it's, it's saying that uh, the process of remembering stuff is very linear so firstly you need to use your sensors to analyze information that is presented to you and then with uh, a bit of if you pay attention to this information information will then go into uh, the short-term memory stage and then with further uh, with further repetition and further rehearsal information will then uh, go into the long-term memory stage where in this stage they, uh, Richard Eggingston actually said that uh, mem uh, the information is rarely lost and can be remembered for very long. <coughs> Whereas for sensory store and short term memory, lack of rehearsal will lead to information loss. Yeah. So then came Craig and Lockhart, who actually disagreed with the idea and introduced their own idea of in, uh, in depth of processing and memory as a function of levels. So their model actually encom encompasses the idea of short term memory and long term memory also. So yeah, before I begin elaborating on this, right, let's just conduct a very short experiment. And each of y'all will receive uh, one table will receive one slip of paper. It contains a question. Uh, so uh, I'd like y'all to answer the question later on. Yeah. So y'all will receive uh, Two two slips of paper. One one that contains a question and one is a blank sheet. So right now, right, you are you will not need to use the blank sheet of paper. All you need to do use is the the question that you see on the slip. Okay. Okay. Everybody got it. So don't no need to use the the, the blank slip of paper yet. Okay. So now let's conduct the experiment. So here you see a list of words, right, on the question. On the question on the slip of paper, I would like you all to answer the, try to answer the question as best as you can using the list of words down here. No need to write it down, just think in your head. Okay, you're given 30 seconds, which starts now. Yeah, so just think of the, the question and we're gonna ask. No need to write down, don't write down on the piece of paper. Don't write down yet. Yeah, just in your mind, just remember the answer you're using on. Ten seconds left. <laughs> okay, time's up. So okay, so now right, what I want you to do is because you have a slip of paper, right? I'd like you to quickly write down, recall as many <laughs> countries as you can. And write down on the slip of paper. Okay, time given another 30 seconds starts now. So, so you, this experiment actually trying to find out uh, 
how many countries, how how many country words can you remember in in, in, uh, in with the given questions that you are given? <laughs> so later we will tell you the results and maybe if you have time we'll show you the results. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thumbs up. So, uh, well, my team, my my teammates will collect back both slips of paper. Just pass it back to them. Yeah, and 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 as they are collecting it, right? I like to uh, say why why I conducted this experiment. Uh. Okay, uh, before that, these are the list of words again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, what I actually conducted, right, was a modified experiment of what Craig and Lockhart actually did uh, during their research. So on the left side of this uh, lecture hall, right, I actually asked the question, asked them to count the total number of eyes that they can find in the, all the words here. Uh, so that is the question I asked them. And, and in this question, right, means that they are processing things uh, very structurally, structurally, where they are actually uh, seeing how the words actually appear on screen and not really thinking of, about the word. Whereas on this side, right, I ask them to categorize the words into different categories. So in this sense, right, they are actually performing semantic processing where they are actually uh, uh, they are actually uh, thinking deeper and they are actually elaborating and making some connections. So, yeah, so these are the two different methods of processing that you see here. And actually, Craig and Lockhart experiment, right, they actually introduced acoustic processing also, which is also, which is like something like, uh, find, does this word actually rhyme with, let's say, the word. So, yeah, structure and acoustic processing are normally known as shallow, shallow processing, where you are processing information at a shallow level. And in this case, right, no matter how many repetitions you have, right, memory, the, the information will not enter the long-term memory stage and can be still be easily forgotten, as opposed to what Richard Atkinson said in the model, model store level model. <coughs> memory store level model. Yeah. So yeah, to conclude, right, similar experiments were conducted uh, throughout the years, and most of them actually favor this model. Uh, as opposed to the, the, the model that <laughs> the model that Richard S. Kingston actually uh, proposed, uh, which is the multi store level model. And yeah, what we can learn from this right is that uh, meaningful stimuli with with the help of orientating tasks. What what is orientating task? Orientating task is like the question that I asked you just now that helps you to understand the try to find relations to, to the words. So this stimuli, right, will be able to, will be processed to a deeper level and then our, our task result in better retention of information. So now we move on to some applications of levels of processing and how they can relate it to real life. Okay, so I'll be illustrating how these two relations, processing, uh, level of processing and seven stage of action can be related to each other. So to illustrate, I'll be using an example used by Nori just now, which is switch on the lights. So let me quickly refresh you about the executing part of the lights. Okay, so to switch on the light, the intention is to turn the switch on. So in order to do that, you need to find the switch panel, walk towards it, and then tap the switch. So when I say tap the switch, you in your mind you have this kind of switch appearing uh, appearing in your mind. So uh, and you know that the switch panel is always located near the door. So naturally, you will look at the door direction and to find the switch panel. So when you do you realize when you're doing this, you actually go through a shallow uh, process, the structural shallow, <coughs> shallow processing. Okay, so next, now, as imagine you are in a very big room, and then you can't see the switch panel from far, and you walk away and say, hey, the switch panel look like this, but, and it's unlabeled. But fear not, you actually seen this very familiar guy over here, so you go and tap it. And then next thing of the of the seven stages, the first part of the evaluation is to uh, perceive the state of the world. To see if the, if the lights are on. But hey, the lights are not on, the ceiling fans are on. Okay, it's not on non air conditioned classroom. Lah. Okay, yeah. So the ceiling fans are on. So the next thing is to see these two switches to see which are the the switch for the lights. 
So you take step back and then study these two lines and to see uh, and and study and you think of what are the functions that you can think of when you see these two switches. Okay, so when you do that, so when you do that, you actually go through a deep level of process. So as so when so after you go through, actually the answer for the previous one is actually that turning knob on or that's the switch for the lights. Okay? So you go through this deep processing. So to to summarize the relation, what I have thought, what I then what I have discussed just now. So to combine these two theories together, you can actually see this diagram show over here. So to take note, um, it doesn't mean that when you are doing um, when you are performing the execution part, you only go through the shallow processing. Actually, shallow and deep processing can occur in both ways. Like but another example is you are debug debugging a code. I'm sure that when you are debugging a code, you won't go through just a shallow level of processing, right? Yeah, so this, I hope this uh, model over here can help you uh, think about when you are designing interface for your product. And also, I believe can be a very good um, evaluation um, model if you want to evaluate your interface. Now, with that on, I'll end my presentation. Thank you.